ASL's Challenger League round of 16 Group A. This is the winner's match right here, and it's looking to be really, really exciting. Now, in the 9 o'clock mm. position on Catalina, we do have the Yellow Zerg representing Infinity Pro. It is Hunter. And his opponent is going to be spawning up in the top right and spawn in Catalina. <clears throat> he is the Red Terran from Dust Gaming Spear. Oh, and this is looking like it's going to be an exciting matchup here. You see right off the bat, Hunter is sending a drone drone out, drone and overlord just to make sure he gets the proper scout before uh, before Wall is in or a Reaper comes out. It looks like he will peek up into the main base of Spear. He does see that there is gas, I believe. Yes, he does. And confirming that Reaper, which is really, really standard. And I mean, I, I'd be a little strange if he didn't see Spear do Reaper on a map like this. Um, yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree, especially after he... Bait. He literally won the game with like three Reapers. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's like, oh, money. can I do that again? Is this for Tyson Row? More wins, please. Give me your prize money. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think he'll do that well. But uh, we already saw um, Smile get several kills against Hunter on Catalina, and um, it's, uh, it's a strong map for Reapers. So yeah, I think I agree with your assessment that we're going to see at least two Reapers out of Spear, and I'm not just saying that because he starts his second Reaper. Uh, uh, yeah, Hunter, so far only just taken gas, but he, he's, he's pretty fast actually gas following up his pull, but I mean, this Reaper is actually going to get ahead a little bit earlier than I think uh, Hunter really expected it, because there's no Lings out, and he's going to have to make several uh, Spore Claws or Extracts, I think, to avoid taking any damage. Yeah, yeah, I agree. He's probably going to need to make a sport crawler at least morph one of these drones into one because he does not want to lose them in this piece, lose them in this position. And, oh, he's got to be very careful. Maybe lose three in a row. One sport crawler goes down, and our squad, yeah, one sport crawler goes down, and then one drone. These links will push back this reaper. The sport crawler will be canceled. Bring that guy back. And uh, oh, this this reaper's looking like doing a lot of damage. Second reaper is coming in. We do have the queen that just barely pops out right now, and that should be the saving grace right now for Hunter. With metabolic boost also coming out, and really that early gas i mean he pulled he pulled the drones after out after that that's exactly it's all he wanted in this position that's all most deserves want in this position is they just need some sort of way to deal with these reapers which mm -hmm. is getting that speed up and i think for right now hunter should be okay but this in the third reaper coming in he's got to be very very careful not to lose his queen uh yeah three, three reapers start to get scared start threatening, threatening queens and that. Uh... Spear has been controlling them non-stop, poking forwards, uh, getting the, every little bit of damage he can down these queens. And now there's no creep connecting the main net, so there's no queens up in the main to defend. And uh, two shots is all it will take to kill drones with this many reapers. So uh, uh, the queens do manage to meander their way out here now. But damn, these reapers actually start to kill things pretty fast. So uh, that queen's on very, very low health. It only need a few more shots from those reapers until it actually goes down. And Hunter's having to build a lot of links here to just deal with three reapers. Yeah. And on the other side of the map, four spear going double hellion out of this factory, pretty common, but also making that third base. So I feel like what we saw in the one of the previous games of Spear when he did this it was completely incorrect, but this time he does have the Reapers in his opponent's base and know what's going on. These links actually may be able to catch these uh Reapers, but the Reapers will get out. I feel like la the, the game we saw him not uh, when he did the bunker rush, this time is like, okay, I got a full scout, I feel confident to do this, and even he I mean I don't even think he's going to lose these Reapers. He's still going to have these Reapers which will provide a map control, provide him harassment, and really it's kind of like the uh, the Sentry the century hallucination for Protoss. It's that quick, I need a scout to go off now. Okay, I got some Reapers, let's mm -hmm. send them in, let's see what we can do. So I feel mm -hmm. like Spear's turning out to be in a really good position off of three base, and Hunter also going on three bases and not really choosing a tech yet, as we've said before. Making some lings though, but I mean, he really needs those lings to defend these Hellions anyways. Yeah, especially since the aggression is absolutely not finished but for Spear. Those three Reapers continue to survive and will continue to add pressure to this, to that sort of Hellion force that will come out of Spear. I mean, he's going to move out with the, uh, his third set of Hellions, his you know sit fifth and sixth Hellion, and uh, he's also got Banshees on the way. Uh, and Hellions and Banshees are pretty nice because they do the same sort of thing as Hellions and Reapers. The 
uh, Banshees or Reapers add a bit more single target damage, but Hellions, sorry, uh, Banshees even are much, much better at that than Reapers are. They have very, very high DPS, and uh, they might even actually be able to deny this third base because there's no creep spread towards it just yet. Yeah, I agree. There is no creep spread, so these limbs will be slow. And these queens so slow. I don't actually know if they want to do that. They're going to be a little bit vulnerable. There is a transfuse for each or for two of them, which will help them. But this hatchery getting focused down, it, it, these forces, man, I'm actually a little bit worried. Okay, they will be pushed back. The fourth queen coming in will reinforce. And we see what we saw out of Spear in one of the previous games, at least, actually just not going for Cloak and sending in the Banshee, which I think is a good idea. He's putting so much into these Hellions and really trying to get the Hellion harassment up with the Vikings and stuff. So I think definitely skipping that cloak is uh is good as long as he's a little bit of micro and i'm sure he'll be able to get this banshee away as i say that it almost gets taken out but we got a korean boys we're good we're good yeah no i think he was a little bit tempted by that extra drone but decided not to go for it and uh, as a consequence his banshee is still alive it can still uh threaten that but actually he's sending it back uh to his side of the map, and Hunter is, of course, well aware of this, because there are a ton of overlords there. A single Viking coming out of Spear could kill us so many overlords. It would mm -hmm. actually be serious loss for Hunter. There will be at least four, that, at least five, in fact, that would die before Hunter could, you know, bring a couple of them back. Yeah, this is going to be very scary. I've said in previous games, I love when Terran players do that, a little bit of Overlord harassment. We do finally see out of Hunter going into Banelings. Now, obviously, he's not going into meters yet, but as I've said in previous times you you quite often will see some lane play some uh some bailing play to save up that gas and actually you throw the spire right now he's gonna say how, how do you feel about that that in this position versus uh, spear as well what we've seen out of spear we've seen him at least going into very heavy bio now uh i think it's it's just a pretty standard sort of transition both players uh getting getting the third base down pretty comfortably uh hunter has actually been playing like with a i think a, like six yeah six queen style really quite uh, defensively because six queens are fantastic for uh, de getting enormous amounts of creep spread and uh, mm -hmm. defending against pretty much anything because queens are really really Drums. powerful as a early game defensive unit uh, finding a similar sort of function to the core and that like they're not great in aggressive roles because mainly in their case because you can't get them there because they're really slow when you don't have creep but uh, one of the kind of scaling things is they, bail, they build creep themselves, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah. we do see, yeah, we see Spear Skills. moving out on the map now, and uh, he's got Stim, but no combat shield just yet. Uh, plus two, two has just been started, Hunter. Uh, they're actually going on even upgrades when this engage, and uh, Spear is only a couple seconds behind his own upgrades. The Hellbats coming in are really nice to him as well, but uh, it looks like these Bailings without speed just aren't going to be able to catch up to... Uh, to Spears forces. Oh, all these Hellbats are going to go down to the Bailing, and that's pretty nice. But there's two medevacs full, chock full of Marines, and uh, I mean, this this should be pretty nice for Spear. He should be able to trade these off uh, really well. I love that from Spear, as you were saying. Queens give you such a good advantage getting creep out, but Spear landing his guys just take out that creep. And actually going for the third again, I was going to say, maybe he may go for the main, and that's exactly what Hunter thinks, because there is a Banshee there. But it looks like he's actually going to move in on the third, scanning, taking out creep as he goes, because that's really important right here, as you're saying, with the six-queen style. And looks like he get, getting, um, I just don't think getting any workers right there. Yeah, no. Or actually, he's got no. nine so far. I don't know how that would come, combine in that. Very close to the sport call, a little bit dangerously close, and he may, uh, he will see the mute. Oh, and pulling the news away, a little bit nervous for Hunter. I don't know if he actually saw that, but he looks like he will see the mutas now once they catch up. And he may actually see this sort of hidden base for Hunter. Yeah. Uh, not, not, not yeah. actually, no, though. No, not quite. And uh, no. I think he's just going to trade off these Marines as best he can because he knows it's going to be super difficult to escape with the Mutalisks there. Uh, but he's going to go for it. Ah, loses one medevac. Of course, uh, Spear is playing from Korea, though. so it's a tough one. But another drop in the natural is going to get cleaned up, and he gets out on out with that. But uh, Spear is absolutely putting the pressure on all over the place right now. And uh, the question really is whether Hunter can hold on. Mm -hmm. I agree, yeah, definitely in the situation where can your opponent just purely outplay and you can't uh, can't multitask as much. Now, Spear, uh, losing that one in the main, or do I, no, he didn't lose the one in the main, he just uh, he pulled back, but I really feel like he, he's only got nine drone kills. I don't think it's really worth it for the attacks, but I do think definitely worth it canceling that sort of hidden base in the bottom. And uh, mm. at the same time, pushing forward in the, or 
kind of towards the general direction of the bear, not really choosing a base yet. Actually, burrowing his Wintermise down. Looks like he will try to go for this third up. There's going to need some nice splits right now. All his units are clumped up, but he will get them up in the Metamax. Pulling back right now, di diverting any of those Wintermine shots, but some lovely Wintermine shots do go off on those Bane Lanes. Uh, actually, man, Bane Lane shots on the Marines, but Marines will start working on this Wintermine, actually. No, the Wintermine was killed in this, really, this force right now is being pushed back. And, oh, I was expecting to see those Mutalists go after the, uh, the Metavax, who is such an important part of this army. But it uh, looks like they will pull back. And at the same time, there is a drop in the main, which will clear out a couple more drones. But still, he's staying alive with these drops. But the more and more meters gets out, these the, the more and more meters that get out, these drops are going to have a worse and worse time. And he's only killed 14 workers so far with all the drops that he's done. Yeah, but I still feel like he's just really throwing uh, Hunter off his tempo. There's still no baning speed, and that is, it's not even started. It's absolutely a critical upgrade, because without it, the Marines are just faster than your Banings. You have to have that splash at certain things. I mean, a big, big win on top just went up on a lot of those Nucleus, uh, killing a couple of them, softening the rest of them up, and Spear is now going to kill them just all the easier. A lot of Banings go off from Marauders again, and... Uh, Spear comes in with his next wave of units, and I just don't think he has it up this time. Spear splitting really, really well, and GG, Spear takes game one on this uh, winner's match. Hey, welcome back. We've got... We're in for Overgrowth game two between these two players, and this is, of course, our winner's match, so, uh... I mean, if this, uh, if this blue Terran here in the bottom left manages to take it, he will be advancing the round of eight. He will be securing a money finish and a spot in season five. And uh, he is, of course, representing Dust Gaming, and his name is Spear. Very, very nice. And his opponent in the top right-hand corner of Overgrowth, going for a little bit of a drone harassment right there. Currently down one game, but maybe we'll see him come back. Really cool guy. Playing for Infinity Pro, it is the Red Zerg, Hunter! Really cool game. Starting off in this, uh, I'm legitimately quite excited to see what we're going to see right here. Starting off, at least from Hunter, looks like he did go hatch first into the pool. Nothing too crazy, very, very standard for both players. I'm curious what Spear's going to do on Reapers, because Overgrowth is not the best map for Reapers, but it's definitely not the worst map. He can still make something happen very easily. Yeah, well, I mean, Reapers are so kind of microbial, especially in the early game where literally nothing is faster than them. Yeah. Um, that it's There's always some kind of potential, but yeah, definitely uh, worse than pretty much every other map in pool. There's probably one which is worse than Overgrowth, but like it, it, there aren't many. It's yeah, just such a short... Uh, yeah, there's, there's there's no way into the natural other than, you know, through the regular choke. Uh, and you, there's not much of a way into the main. So, uh, yeah, they don't, they don't usually do that much. But this time he has forced out uh, an extractor and a spore crawler. So already that's actually kind of more than should be done. Yeah, I think he's expecting a lot more in the second game. We do see a bunker coming up for Spear and double, or at least three Reapers will join. I just like to say, I love this. If you look at Spear's ramp very, very quickly, it's so cool what he's been doing, doing two supply depots in the barracks, not quite actually blocking off, but once he throws the reactor down, it will be able to block off and he can pretty much put whatever he wants right there. And I like that because it allows him to get the wall and it allows him to get his tech, which sometimes, well, if I bring it up, I don't have my tech there, I've got to the supply depot, but for now that bunker will get up and is, I don't, I don't think it's going to cancel this base, but it's definitely going to be an annoyance for Hunter. He won't be able to mine. And actually, I love that. Pulling, it, pulling the Reapers out, doing a little bit of damage, putting them back in so they can do that for as long as they want. Queen's engaging. Reaper's focusing down one Queen, but um, this bunker's going to get on before that. I think it was actually going to happen. A third, or a fourth actual Reaper comes No, sorry, a third Reaper comes in. And you just won't quite lose those. got to be very, very careful against these two Queens at the moment because they are on low health, these Reapers. Ooh, beautiful micro right there, beautiful. And the Reapers will pull back. Metabolic boost is only about... 20 seconds away, so these Reapers have to be very, very careful soon because they are low on health. It looks like yeah, they should be I mean, fine in time. Uh, I don't know how deep Spear is willing to go for that Queen. It looks like, uh, damn, that's kind of a shame because, I mean, obviously Hunter now actually has a transfuse. He's going to go back and use it. Yeah, there we go, straight on the Queen. So uh, Spear had a very, very small window of opportunity, but uh, elects to not take it because I don't think, as I said, 
Uh, Metabolic Blues was 20 seconds away, and he didn't have an exact time yeah. on that. So yeah. it was a very tough call to make. But uh, Spear made the slightly more, slightly safer one. And uh, I think I think that's that's probably right to it's, do because I think he's got to be the favorite player here, and um, it's he doesn't need to make take any risky uh, risky decisions, make any risky goals. Yeah. Plus, he really does not want to lose these reapers because he is going three or not three CC right off the bat, but he is going for quite an early third, a part of this wall. So if he did lose those force, if he did lose the reapers early on, he's got nothing to stand behind the wall and like kind of like throw the annoy the annoy. I, Trying to think of the analogy, but just like throwing the rock and the thing trying to touch you while well, you're up on a high place in the tree. That's what I'm looking for. Lines at the bottom of the tree, you're on the top, and you just keep throwing stuff out. I would not have those Reapers that he needs to really just annoy his opponent so he can't do anything with these four Queens. Mm -hmm. We'll push this off. Just, I mean, even three Hellions and these three Reapers won't be able to do much versus these Queens, especially when one of them has a transfuse. The creep spread starting to go, as we said earlier in the previous game. Hunter has some really, really nice creep spread. At the same time, Spear is quite good at denying that. We do see the uh, Stim Pack also coming out of Spear, so. Kind of saying what he's done in the previous games, going that uh, Hellion into this very, very good bio marine play. Yeah, and these beams are gonna. It's much, much closer the third base to the natural on this map than it is on Catalina. Uh At least it's easier to spread creep to. So the creep's already nearly connected, and <clears throat> especially with six queens, Hunter will be able to start blasting that creep spread straight towards Spear. And. Uh, it'll be much more easier to connect up a fourth base to it as well. So I think Hunter's in a much better situation already than he was in yeah. the previous game, just with a better outlook on going forward. But I, I really want to see him add on a much faster bailing speed. I, I totally agree with you on the bailing speed, especially complemented with this uh, with this creep spread. Spear uh, actually denies another thing of creep, and just to boot, Hunter actually he saw the third going down, and he suicided an Overlord in and saw the uh, not actually all of these barracks, but he saw three of the barracks. And I mean, he knows his opponent; he's going into bio now. He knows exactly what he's going to do, and it looks like getting the bailing nest down. And I'm, I'm quite sure he's going to go for a quick. Quick bailing speed off the back of this 1-1 one, one coming out. And I think it's going to be powerful, especially with this creep. And actually, being a little bit daring with these queens, pushing forward to just remove the vision from the Zelnaga Tower. He, I really like Hunter's Overlord spread. at the, Or not uh, not great, but he's definitely trying to get them out there and trying to make something happen. And I think it's really important to deny any Zelnaga. Um, any, any Zelnaga, just because he will get a lot of lot of map control here. And that's exactly what he's doing. Taking out these Hellions one by one, actually not catching the very last Hellion, they will get away, but I really like so far, Hunter, he's not being aggressive, but there's that middle ground that works really well, just keeping your opponent at bay. You don't want your opponent to take too much control on this map, and I think he's doing that well in actual. Oh, oh damn. Very close to those Queens taking out all those Reapers right there. Those Reapers have trained insanely cost I think they're gonna get away. They're gonna kill every single one of those lings and just make their way across the map and just retire to a comfortable seaside mansion. You've now, done well, generals. You're promoted. You dismissed. Uh, they're not general. Oh, I, I can't see what uh, what rank they are. Sergeant, my okay, sergeant, and a corporal. Sergeant and corporal. That's okay. I mean, they're still NCOs, but I, I feel they've acquitted themselves well. They're senior NCOs. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of recruits though. Marines moving across the field. And really right now, Hunter's getting a lot of banelings in, and baneling speed is actually going to be done when this attack's hit. That's going to be amazing for Hunter here. And also just uh, from this, Hunter getting his Spire down, I mean, I feel like Hunter's a lot more prepared than we've seen in the previous games for what's about to happen. Getting the fourth base like he tried in the last game, but was unable to do just because of the positioning on the map. Overlord will go down. This this game, Spear, interestingly enough, not going for a Viking to kind of clear up uh, clear up any loose Overlords, but uh, still doing that with his Marines. And from right here, Spear's got to be so careful is very close to the creep. Uh -huh. I mean, he does not want to see these banelings getting uh, get attacked. But be, there will be a nice surround. All the marines Ooh. getting up into these, into these. Uh, Metavax. Metavax. Sorry, blanking on those yeah. names right there. I mean, Spears being way on top of his Metavax lift, uh, doing it as soon as possible and pretty Queens much. Queens make it a flank though on the Metavax if they try to pull up. Yeah. Well, actually, Queens make it a flank for themselves. Be flanked. Ooh. Yeah, and they're gonna be off creep, but uh, it looks like. Uh, he's just gonna focus one or two down and then get out before the Zanians come in. But at the same time, Spear is using this uh, 
opportunity for a distraction to run in towards the main base and uh, whoa, a couple of bailing hits do go off but he loads up even into the, the highest health medevac and just boosts Ooh, away. Queens. Brilliant stuff. Please oh, left hand side. Uh, yeah. Those queens are uh, not long for this world. Yeah, that was really important for Hunter because while it was complimenting so well as the creep sprint just kept going and going and going. None of his attacks, he just had extra turn speeds and he has lost those queens, which are the one Zerg unit that he can only produce out of these hatcheries, so he, I mean, he can't replenish those queens as fast as he'd like to, but he is replenishing mutas, and that's working really well for him. But to kind of counter this, not necessarily to counter it, but the common Terran play, we do see Drilling Claws and Widow Mines coming out of Spear, so really getting ready for this. And so far, I'd, I'd just like to point out, I love Spear's uh, walls right here, and sometimes sometimes you see kind of botched walls with random holes in his bunkers, but really, right here, Spear just, I'm, he just goes, he's like, you know what, I want a wall, I'll build a wall. Yeah, just straight up. Spidey is probably like the best walling building in the game, and uh, why not? He goes for it. Also, throw why a bunker not? in there because more static D. And uh, now he will spine. Uh, sorry, it's like a command center behind the wall because it's safe because there's a wall. Ah, and um, also, yeah, also, Hunter, also, as I said, he he had he had lost those queens, and that's actually really quite a big loss because he only had he's got how many hatcheries right now? He's got like five hatcheries. Four hatcheries and one left. Four. So, yeah, four, four hatcheries and one left. So five, five things to inject, and he only had two queens after he uh, after he lost those three. So his production has taken a serious, serious hit for quite some time. Uh, now getting it back up to speed, and his creep spread isn't off the hook enough that he can't afford not to keep a queen or two out there spreading that out. Uh, this is kind of a disadvantage of this walling style. Which is that the bunker being up on one side up there uh, leaves a couple of these uh, depots down there vulnerable. But oh, those mutilists! Ooh, have to Make be very careful head. versus uh, any stem marines that is going to happen here, and especially with these widow mines burrow, but then unburrow, moving back. And I really like out of spear right here. Um, our other previous Terran tonight, uh, ter well, Terran player tonight, uh, did not mix in any Marauders, but I like the Marauders just to soak up whatever damage they can, but also just to slow down because he does have the uh, concussive, concussive shells done, so that'll help a lot. In this creep spread, as you were saying, left-hand side really did add because those queens moved out too far. In this, uh, probably not the downfall of Hunter, but this is definitely going to help Spear in this position right here. Some Bailey's coming from the back, but it'll be taken out perfectly by those Widow Mines, and Hunter will really just kind of get into a very nice position where he'll be able to do a 360 surrounder, almost that. Getting in, a couple Widow Mines do go off, with some nice splits so far for Spear coming down. Thor actually still a fan, not doing anything about these Middle He was working on the Marauders, not doing anything, and almost the entire army is cleared up except for Widow or Metabax. This is a huge win. Huge, huge win for Hunter. That was a beautiful play, but still in the, in the in the main, these Marines are being stimmed and actually focusing down this layer. He knows he wants to get rid of that layer to deny any uh, any tech switches that Hunter may try. Yeah, I don't think he's going to get the layer. He's uh, switching his yeah, right there. Yeah. Oh, fantastic positioning on that Marine. And um, the rest of it is he gonna, he's going to lift up and try and boost out. It's going to be... Oh! Just managed to get away from those Mutas, but... Oh, no, so. well. Yeah, boost runs out, and that's it. Oh ho ho, Hunter is getting Enduring Locusts. This could get pretty fun. Uh, this is not a style many people play, so it's not a style uh, I don't think, don't think Spear will have had much practice against. But uh, it could be really, really cool. Right now, though, of course, as we're seeing, Hunter's kind of overrunning the gold base, and he's taking a big win on his opponent's side of the map. He's going to be breaking this location. The uh, Marines, the reinforcements trickling are not really going to be enough to deal with this big mutable, although... Uh, a few more marines on that will uh, push them away, but on the left hand I mean, side, when, yeah, on the left hand side, Spear is trying to put on the aggression as well, and I feel like uh, that little push in, if it was supported by a couple of locusts, would do fantastically, and you know, would have really, really pushed those marines away, would have broken that base. But at the same time, uh, Spear's multi-point harassment is just being all over the place all at once and doing drop, doing damage with like four medivacs worth of drops. Uh, all just pushing in in different places is going to do really, really nicely against the more immobile Swarmhost style. Even if it is like a quasi-mobile Swarmhost mutilisk sort of yeah, sort yeah. of business going on, I feel like Spears' harassment is going to be really nice against that. Yeah, and I also think his defense is going to be pretty well, but it's it's just been strange so far. Actually, just 
Uh, side note for here right now, at least Hunta is going on the left-hand side of the map, taking out Barracks, but all these Marines should get back in time. But as I was just going to say, on the right-hand side, Spear did scout all this creep, so he did put some Wittemines at the third and at the fourth, so he's really expecting a lot more to hit on that right-hand side that hasn't came yet because the creep is just so close to those bases, and I'm surprised we haven't seen uh, more down on this. But Thor's in a beautiful position with, with the Wittemines around them. That is awesome. That is a great play right there by Spear. Yeah, Spear's trying to catch out these Mufus, but... The Locusts are coming in now and they're going to start pressuring this uh, Plenty Fortress. So he's actually retargeting them just on the uh, SCVs because it's much more guaranteed damage, which I think is a good decision. Yeah. Are yeah. they? Did he move them up and bar? I guess he moved them up, borrowed them, and then uh, backed yeah. off. But Yeah. Uh, he, he's yeah. too worried about the gold base. He's trying to get that yeah. fourth base economy or fifth base economy up. Oh, the Mucus are running towards all this. There's a lot of turrets here, though, now. With the yeah, SV to fight. Oh, no, it's a view break, though. It's going to be pretty difficult. And Spear's pushing forward and taking out the creep at the same time as Hunter is trying to take down this goal base. And he's, he's taking down a fair bit of health in it. But, oh, he doesn't want to get caught with these Sim Marines. And we'll uh, yeah. I, I totally agree with that. And especially, like, I was going to say we're going to see we're gonna see all these links and bandlings try to catch up with this army, but there's just some beautiful Widowmine plays so far from Spear. I think I've been really, really cool. And, yeah, this Hunter trying to get into a better position. He does have all this creep spread. A lot of it was cleaned up on the right hand side of the map, but he has all the creep spread connecting all of his bases and is moving around quite fast. Uh, these Mutas, an interesting position, or not, not an interesting position, but in a good position, just keep moving around the map, but it's going to be... I feel like I'd rather see some Widowmines at this gold base instead of the turrets, because... But even though the turrets have done so much damage, though, there were four turrets originally that when that first middle attack happened. Yeah, I mean the Marines do pretty nicely too, but eventually they do get killed by Mutilus. And oh, these many Marines, I don't think will though. This is not a fight Hunter wants to take at all, but his focus is across the other side of the map as Spear is pushing in, and he's going to lose a lot of Mutilus for this. No stim yet either. He does win eventually, so. but that is not a cost to trade by any means. That, all the Bailey's coming in though, but uh, they have to just back off again because the Thors oh, are the left mute. on the ground after Spear lifts. Yeah, Thor, both the Thors will be dropped, Marines also being dropped. There was a lot of Marines killed in that fight, and Locust getting a nice angle actually on that. Uh, I, I would have, what I thought we were going to see those Milos just take out all the medevacs with the units in it, but the units are dropped right now. There is no Widow Mines to add, provide that really nice support that allows Karen to, to retreat wherever they want. Widow Mines being taken out, but still just a beautiful, uh, beautiful Widow Mines hit right there. Not great splits so far from, or not great splits in that battle from Spear, but he is reinforcing with just so many units. He has such a nice economy going. He does have eight barracks down with uh, a good six of them with reactors. There's 12 Marines at a time with uh, he has 12 marines at a time with just two marauders so I really like that composition right there mixing in just a few marauders to take these banelings hits but now I'm really curious to see how Spear is going to deal with these locusts because I mean he can keep he can keep kind of poking around at Hunter but eventually obviously just these locusts cost nothing but he does need to keep Costa he doesn't need to keep putting in the banelings though yeah the banelings are I think he part as well without them he can, he can kite against the locusts pretty well oh this is pretty nice but does get shut down really, really quickly. Uh, nice idea, though. But I mean, yeah, the further in hunt, sorry, the further in spear pushes towards hunter, uh, the more difficult the locusts become to deal with because the more uh, the more frequently they come, really, they don't have that yeah. it's, it's It's kind of like defenders' advantage, except uh, instead of applying to units you actually build, it just applies to units that just come for free after the swarm. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. When those units only last 25 seconds anyway, every couple seconds of defense advantage that you get closer uh, really can matter a lot. Yeah, I agree, definitely. Just a little bit of closer. Here. Oh, what am I? I was going to say, what am I going to hit it, but I guess they don't cost anything anyway. So, but there. And these middle want to be so, so careful. There is three turrets in the whole army with a couple of little mines right here. It's not going to be good, but on the right hand side of the map, we do see a little drop that's going to come into this main. Hive just completed about about 30, 40 seconds ago, but the Mutas will be in time to catch up with it. He's met up. Oh, but the Mutas actually got a new blue command, allowing these Marines to get a little bit of a nice position here. They will stem forward into this, uh, into the main base, targeting down these Mutas. These Medivacs are very, very low on health, though. It looks like the, most of this army will be cleaned up, and I'm guessing these Medivacs will go down. Yes, both of them do go down. That was a big hit, but still in the main in, in the main part of the map. Spear actually uh, taking a lot of damage from a Locust wave that just came out, and currently there are 13 Locusts for Hunter, so it's pretty hard to deal with at the moment. And another big wave coming out, and even though Spear's trying to attack from the low ground, these Locusts just can keep coming and really just at, at least splat, take the splash damage of... Oh! 
big person on the mines, almost a nice hit on those needles. Yeah, that was a pretty good hit on the needles, but I mean, a lot of the Widow mines are really, really quite bad against uh, Stormhost because either they just go off on the Locust and then yeah. uh, that's not good, or the Locust kill them, or both. But yes. this is a really good against Hunter coming up from both sides and uh, crushing through Spear with the Locust Wave as well, so he's going to play really, really close to me there. And um, yeah, I think 13 Stormhost is a really good number for him. And it kind of feels like Spear doesn't have much experience playing against the style. I'm not surprised because. I mean, so I think I've only ever seen Snoot and Scarlet pull out this kind of uh, Stormhost versus Bio style. And yeah, even I then, agree. Hunter is playing it a little differently than they typically do. Hunter based style, on style, man. Hunter style. Yeah, the Hunter style. Oh, so I like mixing in just a few siege tanks. He knows his opponent's a little bit too close, close to his base right now, and really needs to start just touch, just reaching out and touching his opponent before he can even get them to do those damage with those costs, with those free units. A nice dim forward actually maybe able to get some of these swarm hosts, but it looks like Banelings coming in, but these uh, these siege tanks very very close may do some damage, but actually Banelings will slaughter them right now. A lot of the units of Spear are stemmed and pretty low on health. These Locusts working on the very last siege tanks, and it kind of looks like the army of Spear is kind of disheveled here, but these Locusts will die in just a very couple seconds, but still, the army of Spear not looking too good, and right now, Hunter actually on another base here. Economy just doing really, really well for Hunter here, and he's, he, yeah. he's getting about 20,000 minerals a minute to only about 12,000 of Spear. Yeah, that was a great push towards by Hunter. Uh, just a couple of seconds before the Locust Wave, he saw an opportunity as uh, he, you know, he thought, ah, Spit, you've overstepped your mark a little bit, your your boundaries a little bit. I'm going to put you back in your place, and uh, did you know, did just that. Now he pushes towards again with another Locust Wave onto this gold base, uh, which is coming a bit of a theme, and he's he's changing his army a bit, a little bit, mixing in some ultimates. Uh, oh no, the Marines all get caught by those things, and just as the new Locust Wave spawns, and they will get slaughtered there. There have been a lot of Marines, uh, 240 Marines have died this game so far, which is, uh, I mean, that's a lot of Marines. Yeah, well, for a second there, I was actually going to say this it may go well for Spear because the first Locust Wave was out, but those uh, Lins came in and just decimated the army. And Spear's really on his last legs here. He will lose his gold base very soon, or at least it will be mined out. And it looks like the army of Spear Mutas. Mutas is so strong as a Thorn, a couple of Marines, but there's not a, there is no Metavax to complement this bio and really make a good Ultralist moving. And GG, Hunter takes game two, putting out this for 1-1. One, one. I'm... I'm, I'm really happy Hunter made it there, but I'm, I'm honestly a little bit surprised he actually did take that game. Hey everyone, and welcome to Vani Research Station in this final game of a best of three for the winner's place in a group A of the round of 16. I'm really excited to see this. And in the top spawn position of Ani Research Station, playing for Dust Gaming, currently up one game, but they are even. It is Spear. I realize it's kind of contradictory, up one game, but they are even. It is 1-1. One, one. Yeah, and uh, his opponent down in the bottom position of Ani Research Station is the Red Zerg player from Infinity Pro Team. Hunter. And, uh, he's obviously uh, a little worried about some Korean shenanigans because he is sending that drone scout up, out and around. Just looking for pretty much all the proxy to act locations. So he's pretty well covered though. He has scouted yes. almost the whole yes. uh, of his half of the map already in some capacity or another. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, it will be difficult to imagine Spear having any proxy racks sneakily hidden away anywhere. Oh, yeah. but he's still actually got a couple on some waypoints. He's still thinking something may, may happen. Mm -hmm. But out of a, uh, just kind of random though, it will be from Dust, the little devil emoticon versus a owl. I did to point that out. I really like the owl with infinity around it for Hunter, Infinity Pro. Oh, I just got that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I was just looking at that for a while. But yes, we do see out of Infinity, or uh, it's not out of Infinity, out of Hunter. Hunter going for a full scout, making sure he sees everything because Spear is a Korean player, so they really love their cheese, really love what they can do. And out of Spear, looking like it's going to be a normal Reaper fast, or not actually a normal Reaper fast, it's been actually going for a 
c- command center before the first Reapers. So uh, how do you think this is going to play out for Spear? Because normally you see you're being safe, you get the Reaper out, and he's actually doing a Marine. So what do you think is going to happen? Um, I think that just this uh, one Marine is going to try and go on a little Overlord hunt. But actually, looks like Spear is going to skip the Reapers and just go for fast factory. So uh, we can see him going pretty much straight into... Uh, pretty much almost guaranteed to be Hellions, but uh, yeah, it's it's almost certainly going to be Hellions, though we could see Widowmine drops as well, and uh, that could be fun too, but uh, we'll basically know when the uh, when the factory gets swapped over there and um, yeah, I can't surprised to see no uh, I'm not, no, I'm not that surprised. I'm not that surprised to see uh, the fact that Hunter hasn't put any of his overlords in risky spots where they could be killed by uh, by Marines. In fact, the overlord that went on a little proxy Turax hunt went veered off fairly quickly towards some airspace where it would be yeah. safe, despite the fact that it was quite a long way away from where Spears Barracks would be. And uh, these two queens at the top of the ramp are just going to block it really, really nicely in case there are any super fast Hellions. And the Hellions are going to be as fast as you can reasonably expect and actually what is he but it's that is a oh yeah he is eBay blocking that third base as well uh i looked at it and i saw like a starport in the construction town and i was like is he what starport star blocking port? what's going doing on doing some proxiness right here not a hidden proxy though but yes e engineering bay will be down and i feel like really right now after hunto's he's scouted okay no shenanigans coming out of sphere and he just put in his overlords into a nice position into kind of like that eight, nine minute mark to send them in and say, okay, what can I see? What's going on? Yeah, and uh, he will actually roast away that drone, which delays the uh, third base a little bit. He's going to try at the second one, but uh, with these queens defending it and the lengths, he won't quite manage it and we'll, uh, we'll have yeah, to back off. But Two queens would even defend two Hellions in this position, actually. They will be fine. Yeah. Third going down. And, but, or I, I was actually going to say, now, the reason, originally I was going to say maybe the reason he didn't send the Overlord in is because he's afraid of the Viking, but the Viking will be coming out and heading right in the position of that Overlord. So this is the perfect time for the Overlords of Hunter to move in and see what they can scout, because they will be dead soon. You will see the third command center going down, and possibly even both these racks. I'm 100% I'm sure he's going to see both of these. So this is an amazing scout, actually, for Hunter. Very nice time. Yeah, and uh, speaking of main scouts, he's going to scout this uh, drop for Spear coming into his natural base, but your action's a little bit slow, and uh, uh, no, he does manage to... Oh, I think he'll be out. okay. Yeah, the Widowmine comes out, and oh, oh, it goes off on the Queen, actually, so uh, he should be able to pick this off. Oh, I, I... No, not quite. Ah, the transfuse comes down, so he won't get that. Five uh, Queens will be able to deal with this fine now. Mates. Yeah. Uh, and of course, that spore coral was thrown down almost immediately. Uh, so, really nice there. Wow, these are Hellions doing way more damage than they really should, because there's just two Hellions, and that's all Spear has made. Yeah, that's way, way more than they should have got. Yeah, poking in, getting one or two, or probably only getting one, then being pushed back. They w Oh, they actually get another kill. And. Oh, they'll actually look at another drone kill, but they are pushed back. And yeah, that was way more than he wants. Coming out of. Coming out of um, Spear, we do see very, very normal mid-game as he's been playing, going into that Hellion Reaper, not sorry, Hellion Marine style that he really likes, maybe even the Hellbats. I'm kind of curious if he'll do that because uh, he is on these, he is on three gas, but uh, not really something we may see out of this position. He does have the Armory on the way, though. So I'm curious whether we're going to see something from there, some Hellbat drops possibly. But right now for Hunter, you know... It, it's it's at the nine minute mark. I feel like he should have a lot more drones than he should than he does right now. He's be, I feel like maybe he's kind of been forced to make a, uh, these queens and the lanes. Um. Yeah. I mean, he's he's kind of favored his queens all game. This should have more drones though. Going up to seven queens, which is an extra one. But uh, yeah, he's a little bit low on the drone count, and obviously he's been taking a little bit of uh, spear, damage actually. from spears drops and. Uh, such like, but still, he's actually only lost seven drones, which doesn't totally explain his slow drone count. Although, the fact that a big wave just finished up and it's looking a little bit more healthy kind of does, but still, yeah. I feel like he should have one or two more. Yeah, we do see a Viking on the right hand side. Pick off another Overlord, as I said, I've loved that. And there will be four Hellbats, sorry, six Hellbats ready to drop in the right hand side. And Overlord, actually, this Viking may. No, the Overlord actually will not see it at all. 
because another overlord, the overlords are moving out of position. Boost forward, these medevacs are going to go in, and there's going to be relatively nothing to defend except for the actually a spine crawler in a decent position. But uh, if these can go in the back of the mineral line, drop first there, they can get a lot of damage done. And it looks like they will do exactly that. There is three queens trying to engage these medevacs, take them out. There are four queens. Lynn's coming in. Medevacs actually have to pull back because they cannot engage with those queens. But the Hellbats is doing wonders right here. Have to be very careful for the family. This is three Hellbats go down. It's really big. This drop has almost been entirely shut down, actually, now. And being pushed back, only two Hellbats survive and one so low on health. Wow. But we do see a little Hellion attack on the left hand side. That was really. He literally didn't kill a single drone during that attack. Wow, that's really impressive. Uh, a single drone. Quite a few links went down, of course, but the Queens were a real backbone of that force. And uh, this is, of course, not over yet because Spirit's going to regroup. Some more reinforcements, some more Hellbats coming in, and uh, he's going to push in towards the third base of Hunter. But Hunter will be ready and waiting, but no Banings finished morphing just yet. It's gonna be, he's going to be holding, transfusing these Queens desperately. But now come the Banings in. Bang, 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 bang. That's all. Oh, he actually needs oh. a lot of these Hellbats alive, but... Uh, I actually Nick. think that was a really good decision right there with the micro. He saw there was a lot more marines and decided to split them and really, really did that well. Transfuse is going down and these queens will survive, probably. Yep, they will. And combat shield finishing right now. Oh, but Transfuse is on that. Oh, one queen does get out, but... Yeah, now with combat shields, these marines are going to be a little bit more durable. And they're going to back off, but... Really nice holds by Hunter, and uh, I, I think just really just goes to show the power of those... Uh, high early queen count yeah yeah it, it allows you to get so much energy on them and in the right hand side speaking of queens there are no queens to defend that third base right there a couple of hellbats or sorry no hellions moving in along with these marines this is going to be pretty i think this is actually going to do a lot of damage because the main army is the left hand side defending what he thinks is the main army while it's only about a fraction of it is marines being stemmed forward there are the medics with it healing it a couple of links coming in with these hellbats should be able to fry them up pretty easily and uh, being a full surround with these links oh. but so many Lings are going to die because of the position of these Hellbats and these Marines. And on the left hand side, Marines moving forward, Hellbats moving forward, pressuring in, all the Bailey being pulled back. Spear takes game three, 2 1.